Hello guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. My name is Kwanda Nyazeka. Thank you so much guys for subscribing. I really appreciate it. If it's your first time here and you enjoyed this video, please make sure you subscribe. We talk about everything, entrepreneurship, financial education, running your business, as well as entrepreneurship. So today I want to talk about how I made 5,000 in two weeks. So it was during lockdown and I found myself at home and I didn't have anything to do. You know how, how boring it can be when you are at home. And uh, especially in my area, it's, it's, it's even more depressing because you find yourself not doing anything. There is no school. You're not doing anything. So I decided that I'm going to challenge myself. I'm going to do something. And it's something that I've been interested in. In for a long time that is farming i've been seeing people doing great things there in farming so i thought uh i should start something as well and then i decided that i'm going to start a small farm where i'm going to produce a number of vegetables i was producing a number of vegetables like your spinach cabbage uh, beetroot radish uh, carrot as well as potatoes just to name a few because i think there's some that i'm forgetting so that's what i was doing so named kwanda nyazeka uh, he owns a farm a successful farm which he calls success farm conducting a small farming farming activities producing vegetables spinach and many other things uh, 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 in that farm he is located in eastern cape and and tambakul uh, 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 is the location of that farm. He actually has been striving as a small farm and land owner. And I decided that I'm going to, I'm going to 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 plant potatoes, and I made a lot of money in that. You know, you know, as 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 black people, farming we never take it serious. If I can put it that way. We, we, we never consider as something that one can do for living. We always associate it with being uh, backward and we always associate it with uh, as something that can be done by people who are not educated. I don't know where this mentality comes from, but I believe that I'm not the only one who previously had such views, you know, because even agriculture is a subject in high school. I never... I never considered it. I never thought it as, as something that one can do for living, you know. And it's interesting that now I find myself in this position that I'm in now where I can say I'm a farmer because I, I do farming activities, even though I, I divide my time between being a student and, and being a, a farmer. Uh, because when I'm at home, I do farming. And, and and recently we, we got a, a poultry farm where we will be doing our farming activities with my friends. So guys, I'm going to tell you exactly what I did. You know, I'm not going to be like those uh, big commercial farmers who when you go to uh, asking for advice, they will tell you a, a, a number of things that you will end up thinking, no, I can't do this. I will tell you exactly what I did. I want to give you this advice so that if you want to go into farming or you want to uh, start your own farming activities or you just want to to create a, a source of income for yourself so that you'll be able to just implement what i'm going to tell you in this video you know and i believe in, in sharing information like i said when i started this youtube channel that i want to create, create a platform where we're going to share information and and experiences so that we we educate one another you know and i know guys there are some people who don't believe in sharing information they believe in privating themselves with the information that can help a number of people and as for me, I don't do that. I don't believe in that. If I have something that can help someone else, I will put it out there. Even if I get it from someone who's going to say, Kwanda, please don't tell anyone about this. I'm going to put it out there because, I mean, guys, what's the use of having information and you are privating yourself when there are people who need it out there? I don't do that. I will share information and tell you exactly what I did so that now you can take that information and implement it implement uh, and, and do something for us all. So this is what I did. 
I, I, I decided that um, I want to plant Amazambali uh, potatoes. And this time, I didn't want to... I was not focusing on something that we are going to eat at home, you know. I know we are in black families, uh, the, the, another reason that we never make it big in the, in the farming space is that we, we see farming as a way of life. We don't treat it as a business, you know. Uh, I'm talking from experience. I know this. Uh, at back at home, you would uh, plant something in the garden, even if you are planning to like sell it to the community. But before you can even sell it, there's going to be someone who has already went to the garden and has taken what you were, you were, you were planting there and basically by peg. So that's one of the things that I think it actually, it actually makes us as, 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 as black people to not take farming serious. We see it as a way of life as opposed to seeing it as a business. So this time you know, I decided that I want to I want to actually have business out of this and it was during lockdown uh, my business it was not going so well so i was like yeah i need to diversify as soon as possible because i was not getting any income and i was just seated at home and not doing anything so i decided that i'm going to plant potatoes so in doing that i went to get the seeds um, the seeds and the fertilizers that i used so I used two fertilizers, that was the two, three, four, 30 points, or you call it your, your NPK, as well as land. You know, guys, when you go to farmers and you're asking for advice, you're asking them, how can you start? They will tell you a number of things, like they will mention soil testing, and one by, this is going to be expensive, you know, because you don't even know where you're going to do that soil testing. Maybe you are even in an area that is very far from these labs that are going to actually do soil testing for you, you know. So, Mina, I, I didn't go and be asking for advice, Uti, how can I do this? I just started, you know. I didn't even think about the soil testing, even though I know that it is important when you want to, when you want to start farming, you know. But I in mind, I had the... The, the idea that no, I know this is our garden and we've been uh, planting Ikuyo for, for a number of years. So I don't think we actually do need to do soil testing, you know. And then I was like, let me just do it, I will learn, you know. Because uh, another advice that I'm going to give you is that if you want to do something, like on the video that I posted, if you want to do something, don't go around asking for advice from people because people are going to give you a number of things that you will end up not starting. No, so I just started. So what I did, I went to buy a uh, potato seed, you know, and I went to buy the fertilizers that I used. Uh, and that was it, you know, and people when they think about farming, they think about uh, a lot of work. Yes, it is a lot of work, but there's always ways around that. You know, sometimes when you want to do something, you will think about this factory, yo, there is so much work there. Yes, there is so much work, but guys, there is a solution, there is a ways around any and everything, you know. For example, I will tell you, maybe you're thinking, Guti, how can I, how can I plant like 25 kg of potatoes, you know, and sell about 100 bags and make maybe your, your 5,000 like I did. You're going to think by you, that's going to require me to work long hours and work very hard, of which... I didn't work very hard or very much because I had to think outside of the box. I had to think about if I don't want to work, how can I, how can I make this job be done? You know, what can I do? What are the ways around this hard work that is required here? That's exactly what I did. So what I did, well, that's the, that's the tradition or how they do it in my village. So if you want to do like a, a, you just basically go around and ask for people that are willing to do the job for you, you know, and then you just buy them a, a traditional beer. Not only that, because you don't want to look like you're exploiting people from your village. You can also give them like your your cash to maybe buy themselves cosmetics, you know, because you also uh, want to contribute positively in the community that you come from, you know, so they can help you and, and, and assist you in the job that you are going to be making, you know. So what I did, 
uh, and the one thing that I used there was that was the, uh, the that was the the, the 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 book or the PDF or the ebook that is called vegetable production in a nutshell. That PDF was produced by or was compiled by KwaZulu Natal Department of Agriculture. That's what I used. It basically tells you everything that you need to know when you're about to start farming, you know. And then uh, we planted. I, I got everything. So I'm going to tell you how much I spent for, for, for everything. I'm, I'm, I'm going to exclude having to prepare the, the land because the land was already prepared. I had, I had, I, I had prepared it a long time before that because... I basically called the tractor and they bapetula and then they came for the second time and then umshaba waba right waba ready for uba and then I bought Elen I bought NPK or your two three four and then I bought my potato seed ne? and then Elen fifty kg like a last it was three hundred and fifty. I bought I bought it from a, a local superstore in my in my town, and then the NPK as well. It was three hundred and fifty. Now it's that fifty kg, and then I bought a potato seed. It was twenty five kg. It was hundred and fifty. So in total, I spent eight hundred and fifty. But in two weeks time, not in two weeks time after planting, but when the potatoes were already were, were ready. I made 5,000, so you do your maths and subtract 850 from 5,000 and see how much profit I made in just two weeks, you know. So I'll tell you uh, what I did first. So first, of course, I, I said you will need to prepare your land. So my land was already prepared because it said an instant is busy a time before that. And then uh, what I did, I, 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 I asked my uncle to get... Uh, people that can assist us as we were planting Amazambani. And then he got those people, they came, and then I bought a traditional Pium Komboti, like Ezra's Gubu. Ezra's Gubu, it's 25 liters. So we, we, I bought that, and then uh, we, we planted, you know. And then after some time, um, after some time, Amazambani, and then after, after I pumile, there is that process that you need to do. Uwa, uwa, uwa you know, it's as kumbazom shaba that you do. I don't know how to say it in English, but that thing that you do, basically putting mshaba so that amazaman as 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 what So where we, they did that after a number of months, yeah. And then another thing that you need to to remember is that e e, e NPK, you 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 apply it. When you're planting amazambane so izambane you you put it in the in the hole and then you ufage i ufage i izambane lako and then the spacing between amazambane wako it should be uh, between 200 to 450 millimeters uh, uh, millimeters or anything if you if you see but no this is fine you can do it and also if you do follow the guide that i'm going to the guy that I used the vegetable in an, vegetable production in a nutshell, you're going to you're going to to get the the straight guidelines that I used, you know. So so we did that Amazambane Sawatiala using the the NPK two three four, and then uh and then after eight weeks after six to eight weeks Amazambane also is a pumile of course. So at that time you apply your land. Your land is another fertilizer, but your it deals with um, with wheat, with the sides. Uh, if if no cooler, so it, it prevents ukula lako ogani in cheese. Because if ukona ukula yabo. So you apply it at that time. And then you're going to face some pests. And you're also going to face some diseases. You know, this is one thing that I didn't know. You know, when I, before I went to farming, I didn't know that uh, that plants they can also have diseases like people. You know, I only knew that they can be pests that are going to be eating your your stuff. You know, so I fortunately for me, I didn't experience any diseases. 
I guess it was a good time. And at that time, there was a lot of rain. There was a lot of consistent rain at that time. I believe that's also another thing that contributed to my produce to be so great because it was so great. I, I think that's also the reason why I, I, was, I managed to sell 100 bags in just two weeks. You know, uh, there was just a consistent rain and that Amazamba, I, I, I know Uguti, they, they need a lot of rain, you know, they need uba, uba bumanzi, uguze agwa zukula. And then uh, for e pests, I didn't experience a number of pests. I only experienced pests when uh, potatoes were already were, were ready, you know, I, the only pests that I experienced was e, e, e cutworm. Uh, and then that one it forced me to actually take out all the all the all the all the potatoes and actually put them in in the in the one place. So when we planted the potatoes, it was in October. After five months, the potatoes were ready. I was starting to selling them. So it basically took me. Uh, it took them 150 days to be ready from planting up until uh but i'll be right it took 150 days you know and uh that period between october and january according to the guide that i used it's a it's a it's a good season for about because i think because there is like a consistent rain you know and i think it also depends where you are because some other places even though you would think that it's it's a rain season but it doesn't rain you know but yeah where i was doing this it was raining at that time and that and i believe that it helped to to make amazamba so after 150 days i was starting to sell amazamba you know when you when you are go, we are only about to sell something there's a number of things that we think about you first going to think about are the people going to receive this product well are they going to buy uh, and I can say I was lucky because people they really came they really came to support my business in two weeks time I had already made five thousand and I had sold hundred bags that was so good it felt so good and it actually it actually echoed something that was said by one farmer who said that if you want to sell something don't think don't think too much about the location just start wherever you are uh, the people in the location they are going to support you because they know you you know they know ukulele up or you grew up here so you just need to create that emotional attachment with the people in your community so that so that they will come and support you you know and i believe it's actually what happened with me because people were really coming you know and someone would come and say that i was in a taxi from town and i had that meeting and i thought i should come and buy you know you know that that feeling you're going to get when someone says that i was coming from town it means that this person she didn't buy Amazambani in town and, and was hoping to come and buy Lana or Selali, you know. It's a, it's, a, it's a great thing. And it actually made me stop uh, the belief that I had that people, black people, they don't support each other. Well, my people, they really supported me. You know, there's even one teacher who, who when I told her that I'm selling uh, Amazambani, he said, okay, bring me one bag there. And I'm also going to tell uh, my, my colleagues that are, you are selling, you know. At that time, I was so happy and I was smiling. I'm like, Yane, this thing is getting serious. I'm now going to be supplying a whole school because uh, this because this teacher is going to tell your colleagues, Zake. And the colleagues, Zake, they came indeed to buy Amazambani, you know. And another thing that I, I found out in that process was that people, they don't prefer Uguti, you, you wash Amazamba Nwako because they say that if you wash them, they are going to, they are going to be spoiled uh, fast, you know. So you just need to leave them AM Daga Angelo with that um, soil, you know, and it, it actually prevail, pres preserves them a, a little bit more as compared to when you wash them. So that's also what I learned that people they actually prefer them, but it's not a it's not a, a universal thing. There are some people that prefer them clean because they don't want to be washing Amazambani every time they want to cook. You no, know? that's also one thing that I learned. 
So people were really coming. I really appreciated their support. I really appreciate their support because they came for me. Like they were coming. Uh, I was not taking any break because Amazaman in Nandis Kupela Gokwam. So I would be chilling in my room and then someone comes. And another reason that made me uh, and not and not uh, harvest all of them at once was that if you harvest all of them uh, and then no one comes, they are going to, to be spoiled. So I wanted to give them like as fresh from the soil, you know. So that's what I was doing. So if you come, I would come and go to the garden and package them nicely and then you go and my 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 bag of potato it was uh, 7 kg it was 50 rands at that time and some people on facebook would ask me why is it 50 rands and then i told them that it was like a, a the, the the market price in our area at that time it was it was like 50 rands even if you you go to town if maybe you are in town you're going to get them for 70 rands so since i'm here in the village i was like selling them for for 50 rands and i'm happy that i actually made profit because you remember that uh, i only used 850 and then the, the 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 revenue that i got from everything i got five thousand in two weeks guys in two weeks i was in disbelief I was so happy and excited that people they really came in to support me so thank you guys that was the end of this video uh, if it was your first time here and you enjoyed this video please don't forget to subscribe and if you have anyone who's interested in entrepreneurship in financial education or maybe they are running their own business or maybe they are interested in agriculture or agripreneurship please make sure you tell them to subscribe and thank you so much to those who have subscribed and are watching this video i really appreciate it it means a lot to me thank you so much